House of Commons thinks it's a good idea because they voted on it three times before sending it to the House of Lords. A lot of your colleagues have doubts, it, though, even in the and, Tory party, yeah, And they? approved it every, every single time. Now, so what is different about this is, first of all, that it's a piece of secondary legislation, which over the course of the last 50 years, a convention has existed that the House of Lords does not reject these things outright. And the reason for that is that... Uh, under the terms of secondary legislation, there can be no conversation, no ping-pong. Do you remember the conversations that we've yeah. had in the past about ping-pong? Well, right. It is a straightforward rejection, and that's why George Osborne said this raises constitutional issues, and the Prime Minister asked me to look into the matter and make recommendations to him to but try see, and problem, avoid this sort of... Well, the problem is when you were leader of the opposition in the Lords in 1999, you said, and I quote, uh, that convention is dead of not objecting to secondary legislation. And I, and I did so at the time for very good reason, because the hereditary peers had all been expelled. And the Labour government, as it then was, said the House will now be strengthened. And I argued, well, if it's strengthened, let's see what happens, what life no, would you, be like you, without you, these You said the convention of not opposing secondary legislation was dead, and now you're saying it's a dreadful no, no, thing. No, but Within a month, I had resurrected right. it with the right. agreement of the Labour Party. And that is the only example of where the Conservative opposition, as it then was, tried to defeat the government on these matters. Otherwise, we didn't well, do it at all. Well, and I'm that's so, why I'm, it's been I'm, very subtle. I'm sorry, but later on in the Blair government, you're still leader of the opposition to the Lords. And what do you do? You vote against the national insurance measure, which is surely a financial measure as well. Very much so. But on that occasion, it was a bill. It was proper primary legislation. And it went back to the House of Commons. The House of oh, Commons... It was a financial bill, though. Yes, but... And it, but, the, but they, the conventions, yeah, you don't Adam, vote against they it. They claimed financial privilege, and then it went through without a Merber. What happened on, Tuesday, on Monday is that the House of Lords voted and the House of Commons I were unable to have a second go at it. It's now yeah. dead as an but issue what, what, unless the House of Commons well, what happened begins the, the state, process again. It was the government attempting to smuggle this past peers, whereas if they'd put it in primary legislation, wouldn't have, this wouldn't have arisen. They wouldn't have voted against it. I don't think there's any prospect of this issue being smuggled through either House of Parliament and the fact that the House of Commons well, voted, why, why was it voted for it on three occasions. Secondary legislation the, uh, yeah, it's the, a very important matter, isn't uh, it? it? It certainly is, but the government uh, were well within their powers to put it through on secondary legislation. What is true? That if it had been primary legislation, as normal yeah. bills of Parliament yeah. that, that we, so are, what, we are used to, that the House of Lords would have found it far yeah. more difficult no, to kill it in this way. The says it was perfectly within their constitutional rights for the Lords yes, to do is, this. Yes, it is right procedurally. Yeah. The House of Lords yeah. had the power, but it didn't have the authority. It, so, so in other words, it. you're just trying and to fix... It, it, it's not about convention, it's not about what's right, it's just about fixing a political problem for David Cameron. No, no Adam, I mean, it, it's, it's well argued, but this is not the case. This is about a convention that has existed for 50 years. Successive governments have relied on Which, this. Which, as we said, you on, broke when you were and, in Well, I, I broke it once deliberately for a certain set of circumstances. I I warned against it, and at the end, I rebuilt the convention, which lasted for the, until the end right. of the brown so house and through the curves. How are you going to sort this out, then? Well, I'm going to look at uh, a whole variety of, 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 of options, uh, obviously. I mean, I've only been appointed for, uh, for 24 hours. Uh, and at, at, at one level, there could be legislation, and on another, we have to see whether or not conventions uh, could, uh, could continue again. But, but that remains to be seen during the course of the next uh, few weeks as to what I think can... I, I mean, are you ruling out uh, the idea of uh, creating a whole load more Tory peers so that you have an inbuilt majority? Well, first of all, that would be a decision for the Prime Minister, but it is not what I would advise him You're to do. You're not going to recommend that? Uh, it is not what I would advise him to do, because I don't think that's the right way of tackling this problem. In other words, we've had a perfectly settled arrangement over the course of the last 50 years. We ought to be able to receive that again. I want to provide clarity to the uh, boundaries of powers between the two houses, what is acceptable and what is not. And if I can get that answer right and the Prime Minister accepts it and the Lords and the Commons accepts it, then we will be able to avoid these I mean, there the is future. an argument which says that, you know, these people who are appointed to the House of Lords, whatever we may think of them, uh, they are scrutinised. In your case, as a red tree, you're elected by your peers. You're genuinely your, your peers. So... If the establishment thinks it's such a good idea to put them there, why shouldn't the establishment listen to their opinions? Well, they, they should. And, and even in this instance, George Osborne has said that he will consider carefully uh, what the debates, uh, the issues that, that were made. And the, that is the whole point of the, of the Second Chamber. But for 
centuries, and indeed for over 100 years, the House of Lords has not had the power to deal with financial uh, matters. And this was a, a quirk, this piece of secondary uh, legislation, and, uh, and it's been well settled through successive governments that the House of Lords do not have a say on these sorts of financial matters. And I don't think they should, because it, they are unelected, and the House of Commons are elected and represent the will of the people. What do you say to those of your Tory colleagues who appear to be briefing some journalists that they don't believe your successor, not your direct successor, but your successor as leader in the Lords, Tina Stoll, is not up to the job? She does an excellent job. She spoke brilliantly on, on Monday. She has the full support of the Conservative Party in the House of Lords and uh, of the whole House, is my view, and, uh, and of the government too. I think she, 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 uh, she does very, very well indeed, and I very much hope you'll interview her on this programme in due course. Thank you very much.